Hey, hello, and this is what I think will be the final video for this course. Okay, at least that's kind of my plan for the moment. If there turns out to be more stuff, then, well, I'll make some more and upload it and pass around the link for you to take a look at. Okay, but uh, again, this is, there's nothing new here. Uh, in particular, okay, it's, it's one very small minor new thing. Uh, I don't think it's anything you have to worry about for the for the final ex or for the final assessment. Uh, but again, since I had a question about this, I thought I would talk about it. Okay, uh, I think every, everybody here is familiar with this concept of this thing called get element by ID because this is what we've been using all along in order to pull out the actual the actual element out of the HTML file so you can put things into it. For example, uh, right here, uh, I've got this extra div now called area. I just put a red border around it. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to do something with this, you could go to document dot get element by ID area, and you can do whatever you want with it. For example, you can set the inner HTML, and you can set it equal to something like um, hello how, and we can emphasize it our you have those word R is emphasized and you. Okay? So all this does is it goes off and it grabs the area and sets the inner HTML to something. Okay, so over here okay, and you can see that now this is being interpreted. Okay, and of course this is a perfectly valid way of being able to build things up. Okay, and yeah, it's completely fine. There's there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, this we've been using quite a few quite a few times. But what I want to do is I want to give you a couple of other things as well while we're here, and I want to give you two different ways how to set this up. And I thought what I would do is I will take and I will add two paragraphs to the area, and then I will add a very small table with a couple of rows and a couple of columns. Okay, so just from all within JavaScript. Now, obviously, life would be easier if you just come over here and actually type this thing directly, but we're not talking about this. We're talking about having some program because maybe it requires going to a database, maybe it requires fetching some data from another website. Um, it's hard to say what it actually involves. Okay, and one of our very common ways of doing this is uh, you could have something like maybe we'll call it temp or content because I think I've used this one before. Okay, and let's start off content to being actually nothing. And what I'll do is let's make a paragraph right here and we'll say P. Uh, this is the first paragraph. Okay, it's not going to be very much of an interesting paragraph, but that's okay. Uh, and let's have a content let's put here a table and of course what goes into a table well you will have table rows uh, I will use uh, a very very simple looking uh, table here we'll call this heading 2 slash th uh, that'll be a slash tr Okay, uh, and we'll carry on the next line. Uh, we'll also have a TR with a T, TD, and we'll call it uh, 1 slash TD and TD 2 slash TD. Okay, I'm almost there, TR, and let's put a slash table here at the end. All right, and finally, content plus equals, and we'll let's have an extra paragraph. Uh, this is the para paragraph after. Okay, and that's the end of the paragraph tag. Okay, and down here, rather than saying, hello, how are you, let's actually put the variable call content. Okay, so now, what's this going to look like? Well, uh, I'm guessing, uh, as long as I haven't made a mistake, what I'm guessing is I'm going to have a paragraph that says this is the first paragraph. I'm going to have a small table with some stuff, and we're going to have this is the paragraph after. Now, I'm going to save this. Uh, before I go over here, uh, let's do the following. Let's put TD and th. Uh, let's put a border one pixel solid black just so that we can actually see because I know very well that tables don't show up very well unless you put borders around them. Okay, but otherwise um, that should be fine. Let's go over here and find my page and load it up and take a look. Okay, so perfect. That's exactly what we were expecting to have happen. Okay, and you can imagine that you might have an area on a page and you want a bunch of things to appear. Uh, just like what we did in the, wor in the world of the uh, flexible input types that we did a couple weeks ago. 
But of course, when we did the flexible input types, uh, you know that we did things a little bit different. I was using that uh, create node and so on. Okay, so let's do a quick review of what this is. So although there is, sorry, back here, although there's this thing called document get element by ID, there's actually a whole lot of different things in here. Okay, there's piles and piles of, of methods. We're not going to cover all of these because this would actually be a full course entirely on its own. Uh, but I am kind of interested in this one right here called append. Okay, and this one right here called create element because these ones I tend to use quite frequently. Okay, so what do I mean by create element and append? Okay, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with things uh, quite differently. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let me have something called area and I'm going to say document document get element by ID area. Okay, but I'm not interested in any of these things and right now I'm just going to comment out all of this stuff, but I'm not going to erase it. Okay, now here's the first thing. If I wanted to have a paragraph, there's a couple of ways how I could do it. I could say area dot inner HTML is equal to well, a paragraph tag, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create things up in a very different form. Okay, so I'm going to call this P1. So P1 is going to be the first paragraph. Well, what is it? Well, I don't want to make it a string. I want to make it a new element. Okay, what type of element? Well, it's a P element. Okay, what goes inside P1? Well, in our inner text would be equal to this is the first paragraph. Oh, sorry, with a quotation, of course, because it's a string. This is the first paragraph. Okay, now that's all that I'm going to do. Okay, so now P1 happens to be an element of type paragraph and inside it is, this is the first paragraph. Area is, of course, that div that showed up in the other thing, but of course what I haven't done yet is I haven't actually put the paragraph inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say area and I'm going to use the word append p1. So you see what I've done now is I've taken paragraph p1 and I've appended it to the area. Okay, so let's go over and take a look and see how my output appears. And you can see that now this is the first paragraph. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say inspect and you're going to see that, hey, yeah, this was actually a paragraph. Okay, well, not very interesting, but hey, it's at least something. All right, uh, the second thing that I'm going to do is let me have a table. I'll call it T, and let's say document create element table. Okay, good. Now, what goes into a table? Well, if you remember, what goes into a table is a whole bunch of rows. So let's call it HR for being the header row, and that's going to be create an element called TR. Okay, what goes inside there? Well, what would go inside there would be the various headers. So let h1 be equal to a document create element. Okay, so what's the next type of thing? Well, it looks like it's a th. Okay, uh, what's inside h1s? Well, h1's inner text would be heading 1. Okay, and guess what? I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm not going to go any further than this because you can imagine this is just going to get kind of out of hand here in a second. Um, H2, sorry, H2 is inner text and we'll call this heading 2. Now, of course, what I've done is I now have a two headings, two elements of heading, and I've got this thing called HR, but of course not everything needs to be tied together. So let's go to HR and say append and what goes inside HR? Well, you would pass in H1 and HR append H2. And, well, the final thing would be T append HR. And, of course, finally, to make everything appear, what I would have to do is I'd have to go and I'd have to say, well, append T to the actual area. Oh, okay, now, I know what you're going to say wow, that was a whole lot easier. And yeah, I completely agree with that. Well, first of all, let's find out whether or not this worked. Okay, and yeah, it has worked. It's really painful, but it does actually work. Okay, so notice what I've got is I've got two different ways of generating the same type of content. 
Okay, now do you have to use one way or the other? The answer is no, you actually don't. Uh, if you would prefer doing this approach to create your table, and I no doubt you probably would, uh, then yeah, you'd certainly do it. So why do they give us this option? Okay, um, and of course adding the extra paragraph at the bottom, no problem, it's just a paragraph number two append at the bottom. Okay, now before I get there, I have one extra thing that I want to cover. Okay, uh, there's not only the word append, there's also something called prepend. Okay, uh, let me show you what prepend does. Okay, you notice the difference? Inside the div, the table came first, followed by the paragraph. The word prepend means to take this element and put it at the beginning. Okay, sorry, we're wrong, wrong course. Okay, so uh, that's all that the word prepend does. It says put it at the beginning of the the beginning of the uh, container rather than at the end of the container, and sometimes it can be useful. Okay, now I know what you're thinking is, well, wait a minute, why would I ever want to possibly do this? Okay, uh, what I will do is I will give you one example about why you would want to do this. Okay, and by by the way, in this course, you are certainly allowed to create these things. Uh, the reason why I got you to do those create elements in the other exercise was so that you've had a chance to at least experience what these create elements were doing. Okay, now, um, over here, I've got this file called dom else speed. Okay, and what I've done here is I've copied and pasted a few list items. Okay, so I've got an unordered list called the list. Okay, and here's what I'm going to do is let me open this up directly. Okay, it's called domspeed.html. Okay, and what this is, uh, this, if I scroll down, okay, that's going to take too long. Uh, let's see if I can grab this. Uh, I can grab everything else except that little marker. No, I think you're going to be out of luck. Okay, fine. Um, all right. Well, here's long story short. What this does, this goes all the way down to, uh, okay, fine, fine, fine. 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. So there's 10,000 things. Uh, well, nobody would ever have 10,000 things on a web page, would they? Well, actually, uh, if you've ever been to uh, sheets.google.com or docs.google.com, yeah, you're pretty much talking about this type of thing. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a whole big, massive long list. Oh, great. Now I have to scroll up. It won't even go to the top. Okay, let me see if I can uh, make this, if I can cheat a little bit. I think if I do this, it'll give me the top. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two buttons at the top of this file. Okay, so here we go. At the top, let's have a button and click one. Okay, and button, click two. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a couple of handlers. So on click, we're going to say uh, demo first. Oh, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to show you a technique called string manipulation, and I'm going to show you a demonstration using something called document object model manipulation. So on click, uh, demo DOM. Okay, so these functions do not exist yet. Over here, here we go, function uh, demo, demo string. Okay, and here we go, function demo DOM. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the difference between using this technique up here where you're setting the inner HTML versus using this technique down here in order to do one very important thing. All right, here's what I want to do. When this page gets loaded, sorry, I haven't saved this yet. Over to here, um, save and save, reload the page. Okay, here we go. Uh, when I click on this click string, what I want to do is I want to stick an extra line in here with the number zero. And when I click on DOM, I also want to include an extra brand new unordered list item here. I want to retain all the other values. I just want to add one extra thing. All right, so what would we have to do if we were dealing with a string? Okay, so first of all, what I'd want to do is I'd want to go to the document, so sorry, wrong, wrong function, demo string first. Okay, what I want to do is I want to have a temporary variable here called s, and I'm going to say document, oh, let's call it the list. Document get element by ID, okay, and I called it 
the list, the list. Okay, and of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the list. I'm going to ask for the thing called the inner HTML. Now, what is inside the inner HTML? Well, what's inside is going to be list item one slash li, li two slash li, li three slash li, all the way down to li ten thousand slash li. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to make the string equal to something new. And since I wanted at the beginning, I'm going to have something here called extra string at the very beginning, followed by whatever used to be in the list. Okay, and then finally I'm going to go to the list and I'm going to say list.innerHTML is equal to s. So you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the old value of s, I'm going to take the string, put it on at the beginning, uh, append on the old string to the end, and I'm going to change it. Okay, so over to here, let's load the page so we got the right thing, and I'm going to click on click string. Okay, and there it is, it suddenly it's appeared. Okay, so there's the first one. All right, now down here, let me do exactly the same thing again, but this time I'm going to use those document object model things. Okay, so document get element by ID, the list. Okay, now of course, what I'm not going to do this time is I'm not going to ask for the inner HTML. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this thing called new item, and I, and I'm going to say document create element. And what type of element am I going to create? Well, I'm going to create an li item. Okay, what am I going to put inside? Well, inside the inner text, I'm going to put uh, li, oh sorry, not li because I'm not interested in that, I'm just interested in the actual thing, so I'll call it extra dom. Okay, so, so we know we've got something different, and here's all that I'm going to do. I'm going to say list prepend ni. Okay, doesn't look like any difference, does it? In fact, it's exactly four lines of code, exactly the same thing. Let's come over here, load the page, click on the dom, and you'll see that this also works. Okay, now here is where the difference is going to be. Now, unfortunately, what I didn't do is I didn't demonstrate this on my old slow computer because it really stands out over there. Okay, see this little thing here called performance? What I want to do is I want to measure how much time these things end up taking. Okay, so the way this works is under performance, I'm going to say record. So now I'm going to click on this get string and I'm going to stop and I want to see how much CPU time that actually took. Okay. So notice it took 676 milliseconds total. So let me pop open this thing right here. All right, and let's make a couple of a couple of these things. So it was 10 milliseconds loading. It was 89 milliseconds scripting, whatever that means. 421 milliseconds rendering. Okay, it was 32 milliseconds painting painting and it was three milliseconds for system and the total was oh sorry there was a little bit of idle time so ignore that one okay um okay well fine maybe we better mark it down so 121 idle i don't think uh, that just means i was sitting here i'm waiting so it was 676 milliseconds total all right now let me reload the entire page okay let me clear the clear the old measurements and let me record this once again so we start recording this time I'm going to click on click Dom and I'm going to click stop and let's take a look about how much time this ended up taking this time okay so uh, take a look at the difference between the two here let me make this a little bit bigger so I don't have to copy everything down this way we can see it all and take a look at the difference between those two uh, first of all, okay, so ignore that loading time. That was absolutely nothing. Uh, the scripting time, um, yeah, okay, there was quite a bit more scripting time, whatever that means. In fact, it was like 10 times as much scripting. This one right here, this is actually the really critical one, the time called rendering. Rendering has to do with the amount of time it took to actually put things onto the screen. Okay, uh, it did say some idle time, and I believe that's just because things were sitting around. Um, because I think I was a little slow actually getting to click the stop button, so I think we should probably ignore that idle time. Uh, but this rendering time, this is the time that actually made a big difference. 421 milliseconds versus uh, 141. Uh, 
you can almost see this. Uh, it's not so obvious on my on this particular MacBook, but take a look. Notice when I click the string, it hung for a couple seconds, but when I tried the DOM manipulation, it was like pretty much instant. Okay, you can see how much slower that happens to be. Okay, so what's going on? All right, the reason why this ends up being so much slower up here is because when you hand when you hand the document object model an HTML content, it actually has to go through looking at all the HTML tags and it has to figure out what they are. Uh, down here, it didn't actually look at the 10,000 items because up here, remember, this now has 10,001. This does not have 10,001. The 10,000 items are still in the document. All that I'm doing is I'm just adding one extra value and or one extra one extra list item and that ends up just being a whole lot faster. Okay, so that's really the reason why you might be using these create elements and append or prepend. Uh, I, Append child, by the way, is almost the same thing as the word append. It's got some uh, slightly more restrictive things, uh, but it's, it works about the same way. Um, but that's the reason why you might be using these things is because it might be faster. Uh, however, if you're dealing with things and you just want to make it easier, like what we did over here, yeah, this would definitely be easier and probably wouldn't make that much of a difference in terms of speed. But again, if you're doing a lot of uh, high performance animations, like you're writing a game, the last thing you want to do is to spend 400 milliseconds updating your screen because, well, you only have 16 milliseconds if you want to keep up your, six, your, your 60 hertz refresh rate. Okay, so that's the only difference between uh, using the inner HTML versus using those create elements. So for this course, you can you can use them interchangeably, uh, but as you start getting a lot of elements on your screen, uh, you'll probably find that uh, using this create elements will be a lot faster. Uh, I believe that I have one little example right here. Uh, here's this uh, extra library. Unfortunately, we didn't get to it uh, in this course. I was really planning on it. It's called a hands-on table. And what it is, it's a little spreadsheet, very, very similar to what uh, what uh, uh, Google Sheets does. And of course, what is this? Well, guess what? This is just a table. Really? Yeah. Uh, I can show you that it's a table because if you take a look at the at the actual elements inside here, okay, and we start going through through these things. Um, I believe that if we cover one of these things, okay, it'll be hiding in this one right here, uh, and in probably inside this one right here, inside this one right here, inside this thing called a spreader, inside this thing called HT score. Uh, take a look at this. You see it's actually a table in here, okay, and this happens to be a body with a bunch of rows and uh, a bunch of TRs and TDs. So how did they get here? Well, actually, the interesting thing, uh, down here, take a look at this. In order to create that table, what they did was they said new hands-on table with something called a hot element, H-O-T being hands-on element, or hands-on table. And up here, the hands-on table, or the hot element, was just a query selector. Okay, that's kind of like the same thing as document.getElement by ID. Uh, the only thing is different is it's using a query selector instead, and you pass in the hashtag, just like how you would select something in, for, in order to apply styles. And guess what? Uh, this big, massive table that just got created, uh, that was probably not done by setting the inner HTML because that would have been just too slow. Because you can imagine how many different elements there are and how fast you want this thing to be able to work. So they'd be making heavy use of those uh, various DOM manipulation functions that we talked about over here. Okay, all right, so that's that's all for here. So don't worry about this. You're not going to be asked to do something specifically. If you do have to go and add something to an existing file, like to an existing div, uh, you are certainly more than welcome on the test to be able to do the inner HTML. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but in case you're wondering why sometimes I'm using create elements and why sometimes I'm using inner HTML. And yes, by the way, I tend to use this inner HTML most of the time because well, guess what? It's easier uh, because down this way, this is very, very painful. Uh, so I tend to avoid that. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it for the review video. Uh, if you have some more things that you want me to review, uh, you can put in the request. And if I get the time, I will see about making up an extra video. Okay. See ya.